Okay, quick disclaimer, in this video I keep on calling the chimpanzees monkeys when I mean apes. So whenever I say that they're monkeys in this video, just know that I mean apes. It's 1973 and everything is good. Nobody has ever been mean to each other and there have been no wars up to this point. Especially in Gombe National Park, where a civilised and friendly group of monkeys are unified and known as the Kasakela community. I'm sure this will last and nothing will go wrong. It's 1974, and things have gone wrong. After a period of conflict within the Kasakela tribe, they ended up splitting into two separate groups, with one being the Kasakela tribe, and the other the Kahama. The Kahama tribe is smaller, which contains only six male members. The leaders of the Kahama tribe are the brothers Hugh and Charlie. They should probably have picked some more intimidating names if they didn't want anyone to mess with them. Imagine having to fight monkeys named Deathblade and Dynamite. Nobody would want to mess with them. The other males in this tribe were called Godi, D, Goliath, and there was a little baby monkey named Sniff. The war would begin on January the 7th, 1974, when first blood was spilt and then drank because a group of six monkeys from the Kasakela tribe ambushed Godi while he was just eating on a tree, killing him and then drinking blood from his skull. Monkeys really are just like humans, they even have psychopathic serial killer tendencies. After killing Godi, the chimpanzees celebrated intensely by screaming, jumping up and down, and dragging branches around. You know how in Formula 1 they celebrate with $5,000 bottles of champagne? I think I'd prefer it if they celebrated wins by screaming and dragging tree branches around. I think it sounds more fun. Uh, these monkeys then continued to attack the Kahama tribe, choke slamming them and inflicting severe damage until they died. First they killed D, and then the old monkey Goliath. The Kahama tribe had taken some heavy losses. Now there were only a few monkeys in the tribe, one of them being the leader Charlie. Charlie crouched down onto the ground, distraught. He then looked to the bodies of his fallen comrades, with a single tear falling from his eye. As this happened, he swore to take vengeance on the monkeys who took everything from him. He was then killed too. Uh, and then the other monkeys in his tribe went missing or died. No, really though, it is very sad that the monkeys were mean. They always seemed so kind and happy. The violence exhibited by the monkeys also shocked the researcher who documented the whole conflict, Jane Goodall, who I assume was just standing around watching the monkeys tear each other limb from limb, and then periodically write down something like, ooh, the monkey I named James just got roundhouse kicked by the monkey I named Philip. Later recounting her witnessing of these events, she wrote, quote, For several years, I struggled to come to terms with this new knowledge. Often, when I woke up in the night, horrific pictures sprang unbidden to my mind. Satan, who was one of the apes in the Kasakela tribe, cupping his hand below Sniff's chin to drink the blood that welled from a great wound on his face. It's quite funny that one of the chimps was called Satan, and then Jane Goodall uh, saw him doing something evil, and was like, whoa, oh my gosh, Satan was evil all along? How could I have seen this coming? This all showed that chimpanzees were extremely capable of being very violent and aggressive to members of their own species, a new development that had not been seen before. This conflict should be remembered alongside World War I and World War II, as they all had about the same duration, of between four to six years. The only difference is that this war had much more severe losses, with 11 monkeys dying in the Gombe Chimpanzee War, whereas only millions of human lives were lost in the World Wars. But there is a moral to this story, for as a wise monkey once said, Ooh ooh ah ah. <laughs>